what's going on guys and welcome to Hylian Alf Gaming. I'm your host, Alf, and the time has come to finish the Pikmin review series. My uploads have been really slow lately, but if Nintendo can take forever to release Pikmin games, I can take as long as I want to release Pikmin reviews. Uh, <clears throat> Pikmin 3 is currently the last game in the mainline Pikmin franchise, and it's also what we're reviewing today. This video is the third entry in a series where I review all the Pikmin games, so if you haven't seen parts 1 and 2 yet, go watch them before you watch this. For those of you who have seen Parts 1 and 2, you probably remember that things were looking a tad bleak for the Pikmin series when we left it after Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2's central goal was structured similarly to that of the first Pikmin's, only the levels were split up and made linear for no apparent reason. Combine that with the awkward, phone game-ish cave system, and you've got a recipe for what is in my opinion the least fun game in the series. To reuse the closing line from my Pikmin 2 review, does Pikmin 3 fix the problems brought to the table in Pikmin 2? Let's find out right now! Next, Pikmin. If you remember the setup of the first two Pikmin games, you know that they both star Captain Olimar as their main character, with Pikmin 2 adding Louie as his sidekick. For the first time in a Pikmin game, in Pikmin 3, you don't play as Olimar or Louie, or even someone from their planet of Hakatate. You play as three new astronauts from an original planet called Kopai. Their names are Charlie, Brittany, and... and... Ow. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, Alf. You can- you can play as Alf. Anyway, the reason Alf, Brittany, and Charlie are off exploring the cosmos is because their home planet of Kopai is running out of food to eat, so the trio is off searching for intergalactic fruits to keep their people alive. They think there's edible fruit on a planet they named PNF-404, aka Earth, aka the planet where the first two Pikmin games happened, so they plan to land there and get some fruit. Much like in the first Pikmin game, however, Something is horribly wrong. The team's ship crashes, and all of its members are scattered across the planet. What's more, their ship's cosmic drive key fell out in the crash, which is what allowed the spacecraft to accelerate enough to return home. Right off the bat, this gives us two main differences from the first Pikmin games. There are now three playable characters, and there are two goals, collecting fruit and looking for the cosmic drive key. Moving on from setup, I know I'm not supposed to talk about graphics in an old school game review, and graphics have never and will never affect the game's score, but I gotta say something here, because Pikmin 3 is gorgeous. It's the first Pikmin game to be in HD, and even though I'm pretty sure some assets were built to be in a Wii game, this is still one of, if not the best looking Wii U game. The colors are super vibrant, everything's all pretty and naturey. I just love it. I've admittedly never experienced anywhere near the best graphics video games can offer, and you aren't likely to find someone who gives less hoots about graphics than me, but good golly Miss Molly, this game looks great in my opinion. Okay, that doesn't matter in the slightest for the sake of the review though, so let's move on. Much like with its graphics, Pikmin 3 manages to blow its predecessors out of the water in terms of its controls. I've been using a Wiimote and Nunchuck to play all the Pikmin games, but Pikmin 3 still manages to stand out as by far the best controlling Pikmin game to date. You probably recall my issues with moving Pikmin around in Pikmin 1, and to a lesser extent Pikmin 2, and I'm happy to say that Pikmin 3 has entirely taken away any inconvenience I can think of when controlling your Pikmin. The Pikmin always stay in your squad, do exactly what you say to and when, and have better AI than before. But they've also made it way easier to pick which type of Pikmin you throw and when. In Pikmin 1, the only way to choose a certain Pikmin to throw was to awkwardly shuffle around your group until you were standing next to the Pikmin you wanted to throw. In Pikmin 2, the problem was lessened but not completely fixed by allowing you to cycle between Pikmin types in your hand when you hold the A button. But once you selected a Pikmin type to throw, there was a chance Olimar or Louie would just switch right back to throwing whatever was closest to them. In Pikmin 3 though, you have permanently defined Pikmin types to cycle through at the bottom of the screen, and once you run out of one Pikmin type to throw, the game automatically and immediately switches to the next type. No hassle or awkward crowd surfing necessary. Not only is Pikmin 3 better at hurting and selecting Pikmin than any other game, but getting the little guys into action is way easier too. In Pikmin 1 and 2, the cursor you used to aim Pikmin throws always felt a little off to me. It always aimed at the ground in the direction you were pointing at, so if you tried to aim at something above the ground, you just end up throwing your Pikmin right past it. This system wasn't necessarily bad, but it could be a little awkward sometimes trying to get just the right arc on a throw where there was really no way to aim it. In Pikmin 3 though, that awkwardness is old news. If you point the cursor at something, even in midair, that's where your Pikmin are going, no questions asked. The other way to get your Pikmin to attack or grab something in the previous games was to lead them around you in a little swarm, and this was always a nice addition. It was a good in-between to throwing all your Pikmin at something and dismissing them haphazardly to who knows where, but it still wasn't perfect. The Pikmin swarm was nice to have, but they didn't always leave your party exactly where you wanted them to, which could be frustrating. Pikmin 3, yet again, has what I see as a perfect solution to this system. Instead of swarming your Pikmin, you can now target enemies or objects. 
Dismiss your squad of Pikmin while targeting an enemy or object, and they all drop what they're doing and go after it like a pack of wolves. What's especially cool about this target and dismiss tactic is that different Pikmin types will react to it slightly differently. Like how blue Pikmin will swim in any direction to attack things underwater, or how winged Pikmin will fly through the air to attack airborne things. And speaking of different Pikmin types, Pikmin 3 adds two new Pikmin types. We lose the use of white and purple Pikmin from Pikmin 2, but we're again brought up to five Pikmin types by the inclusion of rock Pikmin and winged Pikmin, which are way cooler than white and purple if you ask me. Rock Pikmin are heavy like purple Pikmin, but they're also the only way to break obstacles and enemies made of crystals or glass, which I think is really creative and cool. Winged Pikmin were also added like I mentioned before, and they can pull up rooted plants and such as well as safely travel over water, but not interact with things underwater. Also like I said before, winged Pikmin can fly through the air to attack stuff. Pikmin 3 only made two changes to the Pikmin type roster, but I I think they really did a lot to help the game. Rock Pikmin and Winged Pikmin are used so much more effectively than Purple and White Pikmin, and they're just all around more versatile creatures to use. It's a little sad to see White and Purple Pikmin go, but I definitely think Pikmin 3 has the best set of Pikmin out of any of the games. I could spend as much time as I wanted talking about other control conveniences in Pikmin 3, the Go Here feature, or the fact that Pikmin will return to piles of stuff they carry after they carried one piece of it just to name a few, but I'll stop myself here. Pikmin 3's controls are darn near perfect, but that means nothing if the bland level design from Pikmin 2 is still present. So after keeping you all waiting for way too long, are Pikmin 3's levels more fun to me than those in Pikmin 2? The short answer, yes, yes they are. The long answer is what the rest of this video is about. I've already gone over the goal of Pikmin 3, collecting as much fruit as possible and finding the cosmic drive key, but that doesn't mean much if I don't tell you how the game is actually structured beyond that. You came to PNF 404 to find fruit, but that goal kinda takes a back seat at the very beginning of the game when you lose the cosmic drive key. You really just need to find enough fruit to survive until you get the cosmic drive key and beat the game, but if you want to, you can absolutely take all the time you want finding fruit. And you did hear me right, you're finding the fruit you need to survive as you're playing the game. You'll never find yourself in any real danger of running out of fruit unless you stink at the game, but if you run out of fruit, it is game over. At least that's what I think happens, I've never lost. Anyway, you can survive on PNF 404 until you run out of fruit if you want, and the quantity of fruit you have is exclusively determined by how much you veer off the path to the cosmic drive key and explore. This formula really opens up Pikmin 3 to different playstyles, as if you really want to, you can rush through the game as fast as possible, but you can also go at a leisurely pace if you want to and collect all the fruit and enjoy the game for all it's got. This 2D fruity player choice system is just side content though. It's side content that's required in part to beat the game, but you won't get anywhere just collecting fruit. You've got to make your way to the cosmic drive key and beat the game, and it's quite the exciting ride. You unlock and enter new levels with each one mostly closed off, kinda like Pikmin 2, and then you open them up as time goes on, also kinda like Pikmin 2. You mostly open them up by finding bridge pieces to build bridges to new areas, which I think is really fun. The task of finding piles of small objects throughout a relatively closed off area is kind of satisfying in a way, and it's certainly more fun than breaking random walls or clearing out poison mist with white Pikmin. It's a little hint of exploration inside of a restricted area, which sort of combines Pikmin 1 with Pikmin 2. You find bridge pieces and solve little challenges throughout a level, while also collecting fruit for survival along the way. Once you reach the end of a level, you typically find a boss guarding either an important item or Louie, and these bosses are also probably the most fun bosses in Pikmin. The bosses in the first games were really just bigger enemies, but here they have their own boss arenas, and a lot of them have super cool Pikmin-specific mechanics. One of them requires you to break its exoskeleton with rock Pikmin, another has you take it out of the air with winged Pikmin, you get the idea. I never loved boss fights in the first two Pikmin games, but I gotta say, they're pretty fun in Pikmin 3, and they're a nice thing to look forward to at the end of levels. Once you've beaten the boss at the end of a level, you typically unlock the next level because of some story event after said boss, and then you rinse and repeat the process through all the levels till the end of the game. And okay, spoiler alert for the end of the review kind of, I love almost everything about Pikmin 3, but there is one kinda glaring flaw in it for me. This flaw is what is supposed to be the coolest and most special part of a game, the ending sequence. Spoiler alert for the end of Pikmin 3 if that was needed, but the final level in Pikmin 3 is this place called the Formidable Oak. The Formidable Oak is the only level in the game without any fruit in it, and it also doesn't let you make new Pikmin with the enemies you kill. Those are, incidentally, my two favorite parts of Pikmin, but let's not get into that right now. You're in the Formidable Oak because Captain Olimar has the cosmic drive key you need to get home, and your main task here is to open up a little obstacle course through which you'll carry Captain Olimar. What don't I like about the ending then, if it seems so similar to the rest of Pikmin 3? Well, while you make your way through this obstacle course, you have to protect Olimar from this weird blobby guy called the Plasm Wraith. This Plasm Wraith fella is really protective of Olimar for some reason, so if you leave Olimar unattended for too long, the Plasm Wraith will steal Olimar. If you don't attack the Plasm Wraith enough to take Olimar back from it, then the Plasm Wraith takes Olimar back to his lair, automatically ending the day and halting all of your progress. As I said though, you're opening up this obstacle course to save Olimar as you go, 
so there's really no way to get through it fast enough to outpace the Plasm Wraith. What you need to do then is periodically halt your progress in opening up the obstacle course to switch control to Brittany, who can lead Pikmin carrying Olimar. There's a really boring, tedious, and somehow also stressful game of cat and mouse going on between Brittany and the Plasm Wraith simultaneously with Alf and Charlie's opening of the obstacle course, and I'm sorry to say that this just doesn't work. I don't find it fun in the slightest. Maybe some people are okay with it, but I'm not one of those people. Don't worry though, it only lasts a few days if you're good, and there's an exploit you can use to almost entirely skip the formidable oak if you want to. I'm not gonna let a small portion of the game single-handedly affect its score in the end, but it should be noted that Pikmin 3's ending is hands down the least fun segment in my opinion, and I don't like that. Okay, so that's how Pikmin 3 works, but at this point you may be wondering something, and when this video's script was in its infancy, I was wondering the same thing. The levels of the game I just described to you sounded an awful lot like the levels in Pikmin 2, but I loathe Pikmin 2 and adore Pikmin 3. Pikmin 3's levels are almost entirely linear, maybe even more so than those in Pikmin 2, but I find Pikmin 3 to be exponentially more enjoyable than Pikmin 2. Why is that? Part of it may be that your end goal in a level is sometimes sidetracked by a tasty piece of fruit to collect, but that couldn't stand on its own as the thing that makes Pikmin 3 one of my favorite games of all time. No, the reason I like Pikmin 3 goes much deeper than that, and to find out exactly what I mean, it's time for another episode of... ALF's PERSONAL OPINION ON HOW VIDEO GAMES SHOULD BE DESIGNED Okay, so you all know how I criticize Pikmin 2 for being linear because I've said it like a million times, but I didn't quite give the full story of why that was a bad thing to make this part of the review more interesting. You see, Pikmin 2's goal was functionally identical to the goal in Pikmin 1. You're given a mission at the beginning of the game, either collect 30 ship parts or collect 10,000 Pokos worth of treasure, and that's all you do for the whole game. You unlock some new levels and abilities along the way, but you're really doing the same thing for the whole game with one big end goal in mind. In my opinion, this formula worked very well in Pikmin 1. The levels were pretty open and left you free to explore them however you wanted, so it was kind of a fun little adventure game in a way. You roamed around big worlds until you got 30 parts, and that was really fun to me. Pikmin 2 also had one big end goal, but it didn't have the non-linear levels to back that goal up. The game was split up into individual caves and segments, but there was no reward at the end of those linear segments. Each linear chunk of the game just sort of ended, and all you got was the satisfaction of knowing you were just a little bit closer to getting enough Pokos. It wasn't awful, but I definitely thought this system was less fun than Pikmin 1. Pikmin 2 was a linear game with goals that only work in a non-linear game, so I didn't like it as much, it's as simple as that. Pikmin 2 was the bad kind of linear in my opinion, but linear games can be and often are good. Case in point, Pikmin 3. Yes, there's more or less a straightforward shot to the end of each level in Pikmin 3, just like in Pikmin 2, but this time there's a reward at the end of each level in the form of a new story bit. Nothing ever happened in Pikmin 2, but Pikmin 3 sports an exciting story that's interwoven into the game itself. When you unlock the distant tundra in Pikmin 3, you're not going there because there's probably a little more treasure or something. You go there because that's where Charlie is imprisoned by the Vehemoth Fozbat. Ve Vehemoth Fozbat. Vehemoth Fozbat. <laughs> oh no. After you save Charlie, you get a lead as to where Olimar might be, then you go to save Olimar, but then Olimar steals your food, and Olimar isn't even really Olimar, and so on and so forth. Every level has a goal that smoothly transitioned into the next level and its goal through the game's story, not because you just happen to be allowed to go there now. This is how linear levels in a linear game should be in my opinion. Pikmin 3 is linear because it has an exciting story that has to be linear to work not because the devs thought it would be interesting to be linear. This concludes today's episode of ALF's PERSONAL OPINION ON HOW VIDEO GAMES SHOULD BE DESIGNED. Okay, I think that just about wraps it up. It's been a long, arduous, sweaty Pikmin journey so far, and I think it's safe to say that the current series ended on a high note. Pikmin 3 has the best controls and graphics of any previous Pikmin game by a country mile, and it also has the best levels and story to back those core elements up. Pikmin 3 is a fresh, creative sequel to Pikmin 2 that took Pikmin 2's linear faults and made them into something truly remarkable, all the while keeping the Pikmin spirit intact. Pikmin 3 is truly a masterpiece, and while no game could ever be perfect, Pikmin 3 is as close as I've ever seen a game come to perfection. As one of my favorite games of all time, I am proud to give Pikmin 3 my first ever 10 out of 10. Thanks for watching, everyone! Sorry it took so long to make part 3, I don't really have an excuse as to why, but with summer coming up I can hopefully make videos for you a bit faster. Remember to tell me your thoughts on my review series and Pikmin in general down in the comments below, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and have a great day!